Hey there, gang. So I uh, thought I'd have a quick chat with you, if you're willing, to talk a little bit about the supply lines of the North American Rebel, North American, the American Revolution in the Northern Theater. And I uh, got a chance to play this last night on uh, on Vassal. Uh, didn't get a full game done, so you know, take that for what it is. It's not necessarily that uh, I'm providing you a review here. Just want to give you some general impressions of the game. It's a game that is uh, comes from uh, Hollenspiel, and I had a few uh, cocktails near the end of the gameplay last night, and actually recorded a, a video for you. But uh, we're not going to share that one because it. Uh, it got a little. It got it was more. It was more humorous than this is going to be, but uh, probably not. To, not a particularly professional uh, vlogging experience for you to uh, see. So Holland Spiels put this together. Uh, the map work. I, let me show you the map actually. Uh, and in, in the video earlier on, I didn't show you anything. I just cracked on for. 15 minutes, so this will be a much briefer video. All right, so first of all, counters are the usual Hollenspiel, thick, uh, well, uh, kind of made, satin finished, uh, elegant but simple artwork. Uh, you got some cubey things, you have uh, food and war uh, things, war cubes, and a die that I dropped under the chair. And then the map is really interesting. I like what's been done with the map here. Uh, it's got this uh, old school 1700s look about it, but it's not parchment, right? It looks like a parchment map, but it's not. And of course, you've got the uh, uh, very thematic uh, fonts and all that sort of stuff, and this very subtle color scheme to it as well. Really, really like the map components. Uh, everything translates nicely into a vassal module as well, so there's a vassal module out there, so go get some of that action. 11 pages of rules into, uh, <clears throat> you must be thinking, wow, what, what, what's it all about? Is it a war game or is it a Euro? And I, I don't know. Uh, so that's the first thing we had to reconcile in our little minds. Uh, got the got the Jefferson uh, Joiner die uh, uh, art, I, iconic art on the cover. So so Tom Russell's has this. Uh, and I'm not going to say it's unique, but uh, he certainly has this ability to create games that are going to make you really have to think fairly hard about what you're doing, uh, particularly in in solo games. And I, I would say this is probably not super solo friendly it's solo friendly enough but there's enough that there's enough to it that uh i think you're really going to need to probably what you're probably going to want to play it opposed versus solo but i think you can play it solo and in fact i probably should check it even say on the back it doesn't say on the back whether it is uh, uh you know rated for solo play or not but anyway in essence, what the game is about, uh, and why the uh, why the why the snake in pieces is so interesting as well. It's another little metaphor that's going on here. Is it by linking all the uh, various spaces on the map together with uh, combat units or, or militia or uh, soldiers of the crown, you form lines or supply lines, and that allows you to to transit. Uh, green cubes and yellow cubes, green cubes being food to uh, uh, allow marching, and uh, yellow cubes being war cubes, allowing you to get into combat or dig in or do whatever it is you're going to do, right? So uh, it's a very straightforward game from that perspective in that uh, you, you've got to basically uh, color by numbers in the, the various point-to-point -point locations around the... Uh, I don't have the, the vassal module up, so I can flip the camera around and show you, but... Uh, Got to fill in these these linking cities and uh, pasture lands in between them, and uh, perhaps the linkages of forts coming from Ontario, Ont Ontario, sorry, where'd that come from? Uh, down through all the way around in a curve to Boston, and then down south to uh, New York and other places like that. So. In an opposed game, there's lots of, uh, you know, which way you're going, uh, what, what are you going to try and do when you get there, are you going to, kind of, as the Patriots consolidate south and build up your forces and then try and uh, take on the, the, the crown, and as the crown, are you just going to dive straight in and try and capture that third city that you need to become uh, victorious? <clears throat> uh, the... Uh, 
uh, the Patriots going to try and block the uh, the advance of the British coming from the north to the south or from Boston out, uh, so uh, or against uh, naval invasions for that matter. So there's lots of stuff going on now. Only 11 pages of rules. And I think I need to cycle back to my point about Tom being uh, uh, thoughtful and clever here. Uh, I So I like his games in that there's layers of thought that are required. And you you'll, sometimes you'll play a game once and you go, oh, okay, I get it. That's okay. And then you'll sit down and go to play it again, like uh, Agricola or Agricola. Uh, uh, his his title uh, about the um, the Roman uh, the Roman um, general. Uh, you know, there's lots of layers in that game. The more you play it, the more you see what's going on. And here, I'm not saying that this is all that like that. I like that. It's not the same, but there's certainly more thought that can be put into this game than you'll get at the surface. Now, the thing that I'm not uh, I was not comfortable with with this game. Uh, which is going to sound unusual given how I learned to play it last night. It took 10 minutes to learn. Okay, I'd read the rules a while back and basically forgotten most of it. Uh, but what I found was when I was trying to look at these rules to reference something because I wasn't buying the load of bamboozling BS that it was given to me by Dave, the guy I was playing with, because he was shooting from the lip as well. Uh, so he pointed me to two online aids. And, and I think... They're essential for rapid consumption and digestion of the rules. I seem to be struggling with the rule books in some cases from from Tom Russell's designs, and uh, I, I don't know what that is. I don't know why that is. I, whether it's uh, I'm not smart enough, or he's too subtle, or maybe he's too to the point, or it's not in a um, uh, passage of play style writing I, I, I'm not sure so this game in particular very much benefits from there's a player aid that I'm looking at here that talk, walks you through the different phases and all the different things you can and can't do and you know what all, all the stuff and then there's also a, kind of a, a rule summary a game turn summary I would call it uh, as well and I think that uh, those two things it's a total of uh, three pages Boom, you're done. You don't need the rule book anymore. You're going to be good to go. And it's uh, whoever wrote them did a fantastic job. I, I will have to uh, go back and check on Board Game Geek to see who actually did those. And maybe, maybe it was Tom. That'd be funny if it was Tom. Sorry, Tom. So uh, what, do I, what do I think? I, I don't know yet. I, it's certainly a game that I would want to, uh, you know, if I was ever going to be found in the same room as a Euro gamer, and I didn't want to play Settlers of Catan or, you know, some CDG, uh, I would certainly pull this out and say, hey, let's have a look at this game. This is a game about the American Revolution, and uh, don't worry, nobody gets hurt too bad, and uh, we're, we're just going to try and uh, uh, build up supply lines and, and uh, take control of, of areas using resources and blocks. So you should feel comfortable. So I think it's got that introductory element to it that uh, would allow a uh, allow a, a non war gamer person to experience the game and have some fun with it and not feel too intimidated if conflict was an issue. It was one of the other things I kind of went on a little bit of a rant last night about conflict and decided that that really wasn't going to be appropriate for the video. And as you know, with 99% of all my videos, I don't do cuts. You'll, you won't see any stagger cuts or any of that sort of stuff or sharp cuts for where I edit everything out, make it perfect. You get me raw and unvarnished. That was a little raw and a little unvarnished last night. So this is the, the more um, um, uh, decorous version of myself. So I would say for 35 bucks, this is a good game you can play many times. It plays very quickly. I'll say you could probably crank a game out in under an hour if you both know what you're doing. Me and my bud, we were really, Dave and I were really just you know, shooting the, you know what, the, the Shinola and, uh, and having a few beers and, and talking and, and we kind of played the game as we went along as well. Uh, but uh, it, it was a great, uh, a great 
gaming experience and it was fun. I could take this to a cafe or a coffee shop or uh, so, you know, a game store is what I'm trying to say here. And there's a bug. Uh, and uh, you could play this and it doesn't take up a lot of space and uh, knock it out in probably under an hour. There's that bug again. All right. So that's it. The uh, long name. I don't like the names too long, right? Let's get shorter names, Tom. Let's not be too cute. Supply lines of the American Revolution, the Northern Theater, 1775 to 1777, will link up with the Southern Theater uh, module that may be coming out sometime uh, soon to a uh, print-on-demand place that you can get from Hollandspiel, blah, blah, blah. All that stuff, go check them out. Support local, small publishers, right? Let's do that. Okay, uh, that's it. That's all I got. Later.